Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab. I'm here at the Smart Energy Conference in Sydney with Naeem from Delta. Now, Naeem, look, I have much to thank you for because you have helped me with my own problems with DC charging, uh, an older unit. But uh, this is a new unit and it's amazingly small for a DC charger. Tell me about it. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's a while that it's in Australia and uh, a lot of them has been installed. Uh, it's one of the, uh, in terms of the structure of the charger, simple and modular. And the size of it is 25, 25 kilowatt. And based on the customer's need, it can come with two different charging gun, Chademo and CCS2. Right, so and this is our... Yeah. So it has a lock, yes. so it has actually the Chatham version of it, and CCS2, which is um, compatible with European brand uh, car. Yes, this is pretty much all the cars in Australia, except That's for right. uh, Nissan Leaf and Zoe. That's right. It's, yeah. uh, it's much more related to the, uh, actually, Japanese car. Oh, oh Japanese car. Yes, so they Chatham. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's a funny story. Exactly. Though. So, 25 kilowatt DC charger, um, why would you choose a, a DC charger over an AC charging point? Like, we'll look at those in a minute. So, DC charger can deliver higher, actually, power because uh, onboard charger on the vehicle won't involve in power actually conversion. So, uh, it means that it takes less time to charge a car. Uh, even though that the difference between 25 and our AC charger, which is 21, is not huge, but, but practically this charger uh, delivered more power in a shorter time. It's a really good point. The naming of the device as a DC charger or as an EV charger, I think is a misnomer when you talk about AC, because it's not really a charging device, it's just an AC supply. Exactly. It's similar to a GPO. Yes, it's a fancy exactly. GPO. Exactly. Exactly. So even though it's a fancy GPO that could deliver, say, 22 kilowatts, yeah. your car may not be able to convert it. That's right. And uh, in practical, I mean, that's you see that you connect AC charger to the car, but EV has some sort of limitation. Some EV car doesn't accept three-phase, even though your AC charger is three-phase, or for example, just certain amount of current they accept that. So uh, uh, basically, EV... Uh, Actually, AC charger uh, actually provide you monitoring, control, and protection. It's what uh, AC charger doing. But DC charger regulates uh, actually regulates its output and adjusts the voltage yes. to deliver the higher voltage, um, higher actually wattage to the uh, actually battery. So. In fact, these are like a variable DC power supply. And yes. They talk to the vehicle. Exactly. And say, How much can I give you? That's and the right. car the vehicle will say, "Well, actually, my batteries are cold. That's uh, right. I can't take so much at the moment, or <laughs> they have right. been preconditioned and they can charge at full rate." Exactly. Yeah. And that's interesting because um, each um, charger gun use a different uh, method of communication between EV and. Uh, actually charge it. For example, CCS2. Let's have a look. Use, show, yes. show me the communication pins. Yes, so communication pins is actually for this charger, it's happening to uh, a power line carrier. So it's a new, actually, it's a technology that the information sends through the, actually, cable. Really? Through, yes. the, through the DC yes. cables? But this one, uh, this one, the communication happening through the CAN. Can cable. So, okay, can so cable we've got a little can cable. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I never knew that. I presume that, like it, with AC ports, these are. We have that proximity. Kind of exactly. So, we have those two as a actually proximity yeah. and yeah. a CP and PP. Yeah. And the middle one is also Earth, but also communication happening yeah. through that. Power line communication. I'm Power line communication. Realize. Wow. It's very sophisticated. Okay. And so this is kind of a follow-up question. People often ask about, well, when can I use the battery in my car to run my home? Yeah. Through a bi-directional charger. Yeah. It comes down to the plugs, I believe. That's related to the plugs, yes. Uh, as far as I know, there are some uh, actual development happening on the CC, CCS actual charge. Uh, CCS is this one? Yes. yes. And uh, probably in near future, we see that CCS2 is the actually Actually, pioneer uh, technology that it can deliver uh, V2X or V2H uh, 
Actually, charging. There's so many V2s. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It was a V2L, V2G, V2H, and then, oh, no, stuff it. V2X. V2X. Anything. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, just in summary, from my knowledge too, is that Chanamo currently is the only one that has the communication agreement with the vehicles for bi directional. That's right. But CCS2 but is working. The future on. is also. Yeah. yeah. We will see some major development on CCS2. That's yeah, right. right. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's the, the 25 kilowatt DC charger. And I can see an application in uh, apartment buildings for this because it's on a wall mount. It doesn't take up half the car park. Yes, that's right. It can be installed on the wall. And there were some um, actually scenario that we uh, offer it in some, um, uh, in some sort of a structure. So it can be hanging as well. Really? For, I mean, that we had a one case that we use it. That you way. hang it? Yes, we put it in a, actually a, a structure for a, for a truck. Yes. And on a rail, it could move. <laughs> yeah. All right, so they can move it to where they need yeah. to charge. Yeah, yeah, right. uh, yeah, the reason is that because it doesn't take much more space, so yes. we had the flexibility to design it differently. Now, Delta make bigger charges than this. Um, I believe we've got a big one around the corner here. Should we go check right. it out? Yes. Let's do that. Yeah. So, Naeem, what's this one? This one, uh, we call it City Charger. And this uh, comes in a different size, 100 and 150 kilowatts. Whoa. And another version of it is 200 kilowatts. Wow. And comes with a different type of the charger. It can be either uh, actually Chatham or two CCS. So, you, oh, I see, we've got two guns here. So yep. we've got a, a Chatham and a CCS. That's right. and That's so, right. But you can have two CCS. Yes. yes. All That's right. right. And so you've got monitoring on a We have a monitoring, board. yes. And it's also modular. So each, uh, each power conver um, actual converter module it's uh, it's delivered 25 25 kilowatts, similar to our DC uh, wall box 25 actually, actually actually kilowatt. So you can add different modules to it and increase the capacity. Ah, oh, hence in the same form factor. Exactly. Right. So everything from 100 to 200 to you say? 150, and another version is also 200. Oh, okay, so slightly bigger. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's, it's quite a small unit still compared yeah. to I'm look I've got the um, the 50 kilowatt unit and it's about this tall. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's getting smaller. And also it can accommodate the cable management yes. solution. So uh, it has a system that it can retrieve the cable and yeah. cable can just hang it instead of oh, just breaking being on the ground. Yes, yes, that's right. Track the cable. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's that's very tight, especially for public charging areas. Yeah, exactly. People exactly. just let go of the cable exactly. and that's you can right. drive over yes. it. Yes. Oh, very so, good. So um, it has been in a start in a couple of actually, actually concept yep. in Australia and car and car dealership. Now, yeah. if this is in a, a, a public area where you have to tap to pay, how does that work? So uh, the most common method in Australia is um, by using a charge point operator app. Yes. So you will see a, a barcode or QR code. Yes. So you use that QR code and a scan that code and then through the app that you have on your phone uh, you get the permission to start the charging session and yes. then automatically behind the scene because they uh, because the charge point operator has your uh, actually payment information then it's all actually happening i'll tell you a funny story yeah. i went to new south wales yeah. recently in my yeah. electric car and every place i went to was a different app uh, yes, yes. <laughs> and I kept on, oh, now I've got to download another app. So there's quite That's a right. lot of apps out there for um, EV charging. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also it can come with the credit card reader. Oh, really? The yes. credit card reader? Okay, yes. so it takes the app out of the question. Yes. Wow. But we haven't uh, actually released it or it wasn't that much demand on that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Wow. Now, we've gone from medium to big. Shall we go and look at the EVSEs, the small units? Yes. That's okay. Great. So, Naeem, we're standing in front of a much smaller unit here. What do we call these? We call it AC Max. And uh, this AC Max charger comes into two versions AC Max Basic and AC Max Smart. When we call it a Smart, it means that it has a, uh, this function to be able to communicate with a charge point operator through OCPP, OCPP protocol. So OCPP, open charge, open point charge. Protocol. Yes. protocol, yes. right. So exactly. that's where you have a third party that in some way uh, interacts with your device. Exactly, exactly. What would they do? So uh, 
actually, basically, there is two main things that they are doing. First, monitoring, and second, providing a billing solution for you. Okay. Yeah. So it means that uh, if we install it in a public area or we want to share this charger with uh, several people, they can uh, define their RFID card in their system and get authentication uh, to the end user. Yeah. So you've got the smart yeah. at the back here, which looks much the same as yes, the, it's exactly the same. What's this one called? We call it basic. Basic. Yes. For a home user, you wouldn't really need OCPP no. functionality. No. Unless you wanted some way of controlling it for smart charging, but I believe right. there's another way of doing that. Yes. And there are some solutions uh, for um, uh, PV generation actually diverting into the charger, or we call it solar soaking. You install uh, that smart meter inside of the switchboard, and the smart meter communicate with this charger through a RS-485, because it's equipped with RS-485 ports. And in that way, that solar soaking and energy management happening. Right, so it can report the amount of power that it's delivering. Yes. The meter can see whether you're importing or exporting energy. Yes. And your solar system can decide, you know, whether to uh, charge or not charge based on surplus solar. That's right. That's gotcha. ex exactly. In and also, you can control the output of the charger and send a comment through the RS RS four eight five ports and actually regulates it, regulate the output. So scheduled charging, for instance? Yes, so it can be done. You might have cheap power at one o'clock in the morning right. and you can... Exactly. Ah, oh, that's really Also, cool. this charger has an app Yes. that communicates with the charger through the Bluetooth. Oh, right, so you just stand in front of it. Yes, and, and you, can, you can schedule your charge. So you can schedule from Bluetooth, you can control it through um, RS-485. Yeah. That's right. Oh, right. It's pretty smart as a base <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's call it base smart. <laughs> yes, base is amazing. <laughs> Well, that's great. Well, thanks very much. No worries. No worries. Thank Talking you to much. you. Thank you. I appreciate it.